What is going on YouTube and y'all squad? This is your boy Yacrates. This is your review for the. Uh, I'm trying to do this on a commercial. I forget Beverly Hills get the 60 minutes come back to whatever. I got, I got the moat here, so I'm gonna just pause it when they come back. But this is the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season 12 episode 23. This is the reunion part two. This is what we're here to talk about. All right. So we pick up where we left off, and you have Garcelle saying to. Um, Diane. I'm, I'm going to just call her Diane rather than say her full name for legal reason. And she's saying, leave me alone. Diane is mad that Garcelle called her evil. Look, I, I'd have been called a lot. Evil being one of them, but baby, I've been, I've been called worse, but okay. So then Andy asked her, okay, so what's worse, being called evil or see you next Tuesday? And the consensus for the most part is see you next Tuesday. Erica doesn't believe that. Now, I'm going to say this. I believe the see you next Tuesday, it does exist within certain circles. Because I'm going to be all the way honest with you. Like, I have been around people from various walks of life. I do mean various walks of life. But when it comes to that, uh, up until me watching and even reviewing Housewives, I first and foremost, I didn't know what See You Next Tuesday was, let alone that, oh, y'all find that to be... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, I know within my culture, <laughs> you feel? Like, I know what is considered to be offensive. That one, okay, cool, whatever. Y'all find it to be offensive, whatever. I ain't here to judge. Diana is upset because she says that Garcelle called her soulish and I appreciate Garcelle for being with it. Not even quick with it, just being with it. Like, I didn't call you soulless. And it wasn't throwing her friend on the bus. She was like, Sutton called you soulless. Now, on one hand, it's because she could have just said, I never called you that. Somebody else on the cast did. But this is also Garcelle in the midst of this chaos playing producer. Because it's, I want to hot potato this to my friend. And here's one of the things about the reunion. If you're on a reunion and you don't engage, even if it's not your particular uh, segment, it's hard to justify bringing you back. Because I know there was one reunion where Cynthia, love her dearly, didn't have much of a storyline in the first, but you would see her chiming in and be like, oh, my little sound bites and whatnot, right? Because, look, I wish we had Claudia back on Atlanta, especially while Nene was still on there. Because Claudia got her smooth together. And from what I understood, segue, tangent, it was because of her getting in Nene's you-know-what that she actually was given the peach and they had to go in and actually flesh out some form of a storyline for her, even though she does have coloristic tendencies. We're not talking about that, nevertheless. So I can appreciate her trying to hot potato this to her friend because even Andy tried to hot potato some, you know, the whole conversation of Crystal and her last episode. And I think for Sutton, whole thing is just like when it came to Crystal, we deaded this. We don't need to talk about it. Her whole thing is, is dead. I, we, I understand it's the reunion and we we deaded it. So why are we talking about it? Now, one thing for Sutton, if you come back as a full housewife for next season, no one understand whatever you you know, dead with a person, talk to them before the reunion. Just be like, look, when they come up on the reunion, I'm going to say my piece. Just know what I say. Don't take it personal. It's just this is what I'm being asked. But Sutton has to realize that you here. You do need to engage. Because, again, you see Kyle or Kyle, no storyline having ass, is jumping into shit that ain't got nothing to do with her because again she ain't had a storyline the first other than kathy and we're gonna get that when we get there so mm, anyway back to this so sudden says she doesn't need to clear anything up about her diana and their non-existent uh situation friendship i'm like i know that's right but i think sudden was taking the cue from Garcelle because she saw, okay, my best friend is not trying to give her no light. Ain't trying to give her, because it's one thing for her to go back and forth with anybody else on the cast, but my friend ain't going back and forth with her. I'm not going back and forth with her. I see you. I, I see you, Sutton. Okay. I mean, you, 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 because look, you carry the first uh, two thirds slash three fourths of this season on your back. So I, I get you. I ain't getting you too much. So, Diane says that she is upset and disappointed. 
And Garcelle is looking at her like, I know you like, like, because she looking like, how is you, in essence, like, you the victim now. You feel away. So, Diane says she will put, raise her right hand and say that no one on the cast has said or done anything, to, well, not said, but is coming after her son. And I'm like, first and foremost, the whole put your hand on the Bible and whatnot. Not everybody believes in God. And again, it's really from a Christianic standpoint, not from other vantage points. Because if you have someone that is of the uh, Islamic faith, why don't you have the Quran there? But then to put their hands on that and testify. But we're going to leave that be where it is. <clears throat> so the lawsuit comes up because Andy wants to know, like, who are you suing? And you know, both her and Erica said it's a John Doe, so we don't know who it is, but it's out there because, you know, he, she keeps saying that this is out there. And I will give Diane that she was like, my privilege. I'm like, I don't give certain people much. But when you have a certain group of individuals, those that are of, of European descent, that can at least acknowledge that they have a certain privilege. I, I got to give him a point there. It's, it's a small brownie point, but a point nonetheless. Erica says that, you know, uh, Diane's intentions are pure. You just trying to stay in her good graces because you want her coin. Shut up, Erica. Again, I used to go up. A, and look, I still like Erica. I just can't get behind her foolishness. I, I like the fact that Erica talk cash money and be willing to go there. It's just when it comes to these victims that are actual victims, I really can't get behind that. So I can't go up for Erica the way that I, well, I didn't review this show back when she was first on, but I went up for Erica back then and watching the show. just like, I went up for Erica. I can't do that now. I mean, I still can, you know, within reason, but y'all can hear what I'm saying. Um, Garcelle says she doesn't want to talk about Diane because she doesn't want to further fuel the flames. Translation. I ain't trying to give her no more air. So if Diane got something to say, she can talk about sudden of these other women. You ain't finna get no more camera time on this reunion off my back. And that was it. So to my understanding, Diane ain't coming back. If she does, it might be to talk about sudden, but she ain't coming back, which I'm coming back to talk for the reunion purposes. So that says a lot. So they break for lunch in the back. And, you know, they're talking about things. So, of course, the Garcelle conversation comes up. I only want to be like, I want to, Garcelle, what was your hairstyle is doing? Because <laughs> for the longest, they was combing the ponytail. You, that that's weed. So, you only got to comb that but a couple of times. Like, your head not, like, if I take, because I actually have a do-rag and a skull cap on. If I take this off and y'all see my, because y'all, look, this is my natural hair. If I show y'all this, oh, we going to be here for a minute trying to get this, because it's all natural, okay? It's coily and everything, okay? I, I love my hair. Your hair, or this weed was bone straight. What, what was this person calling? Me? And then sitting here playing with the baby. I was just like, if you don't go somewhere, <laughs> I holler. And then, of course, you know, ladies want to talk about Crystal and how her story doesn't line up, which... Is foreshadowing that this is well, it either this is going to come up later or uh, Kyle is going to come back at Crystal's neck. Y'all know I babe. That, that's 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 my favorite pastime, <laughs> anyway. Uh, and if y'all want to get some uh, vape juice, y'all know I'm an affiliate. Click the link in the description, get y'all some good vape juice. All right, cool. So we pick up. We have uh, Kyle's portion. I don't really give two ish, um, but I will mention that we did get to see uh, Portia's bat mitzvah, <clears throat> which is which is good to see. Which is good to see, and it was kind of like really really did up. <laughs> like I'm just like oh, like I do want kids. Like my dog right now is my my child, but I do want children, and I'm just like oh, imagine having to do a bat or a bar mitzvah. And then just how, because it, it's it's similar to like a Sweet 16 and a Quinceanera or something like that. So it's just like, oh, that's going to be pretty crazy. But shout out to Portia for that. I ain't got nothing for the kids. Even though I go for the kids, I ain't got nothing for the kids. Then Mo and Dorit, a fair thing comes up. 
And then Kyle's like, oh, well, that came up after the break-in and how Doree hugged uh, both PK and Mauricio. And then she actually did kind of kiss Mauricio like on the shoulder blade. It was well before that. But if that's what you want to believe, Kyle, whatever. Um, and then it's the uh, PK and Mo wife swap conversation comes up. And then Erica tells us this story where before PK met Doree, which is so funny. Like now we're bringing this up. But I'm going to say why in a second. And says that he had, she was with her friend. I believe it was in the club. And he was like, are you two both strippers? But again, oh, I'm sorry. Are you two both in porn? My bad. And this was before Doree. But my thing is, if, again, I'm, I will never discount anybody's experience. If, big if, this is in fact true. Then him looking up her skirt that one season, when she didn't have any panties on, is very different, but I don't believe it because if this really happened <clears throat> when he looked up her skirt and saw she had no panties on, that if not in that moment, that season would have been a perfect time to bring that up. And one thing that I'm gonna say is I really do feel that Erica is doing her best to sit here and try to establish stuff for next season. Cause let's be honest, <clears throat> Erica ain't going nowhere, no time soon. Because these lawsuits are still pending, but she really is a captivating person on reality television. And outside, and if you like take out the last two seasons, especially this last season, she's very polarizing as a person. And when she cussed everybody out when they was in Aspen, they're obviously going to keep her, right? But her <clears throat> bringing this up about PK is helping to read out because what storyline did to read have outside of her burglary? And her PTSD following that. Nothing. Even the little spat she had with Kyle. Wrapped up in one episode. <clears throat> right? And then at BravoCon, the question came up of whose relationship do you see on the brink? She said PK and Doree. Again, feel however you want to feel about Erica. Shout out to her for throwing a bone to somebody else to make sure that they have a storyline next season. Even if she's not even involved in it. Minus the first... Few mentions, kudos to her for that. But again, the Pharaoh foul five four three two one, they gonna sit here and try to look out for their own. So, whatever. So then we get Garcelle's package, her making money moves. I'm here for it. Um, I cared because I Andy wanted to spend a lot of time on the Birkin. I don't care about that. Even though for a lot of people, that is a sign of money and whatnot. I'm a firm believer of, you know, um. Broke people or uh, the essence of broke screams, riches yell, silence whispers. And if you don't believe me, think about all the people that are wealthy. Think about how they dress. Think about how they're spending money. Think about the vehicles that they drive. Then compare it to rich people. Then compare that to broke people. Or those who are broke pretend to be rich. Those who are rich pretend to be wealthy. Anyway. I was happy about the whole um, beach house thing. Again, estate. Love it. Here for it. I hate when African Americans, and even though she's Haitian, not Haitian American, she's actually Haitian, but I hate when African Americans or those who are black, because I really don't like to use the word black because that really lends itself to colorism, but for the, you know, the whole overall arching spectrum and addressing, you know, us as a people, I hate when black people do the you know are quick to sell property especially that that is inherited rather than keep it because it's just like in the long term it's really going to accumulate especially if, even if you don't keep it up because there's a lot of other ethnicities like i've been in, better yet when i was stationed in alabama because for those of y'all who don't know i am a veteran 11 years military i did four years not and i'm stationed at uh fort Worth, alabama and that's not including my ait time which is advanced individual training nevertheless i've seen houses that were literally decrepit they're still there because the property taxes are being paid on that because that land ain't going nowhere at all. And especially when it comes to, you know, those, you know, African descendants of slavery, the Ados, that community, us, we are so quick to sell for that quick money. And more often than not, we do it. We're in, in areas that are going to be gentrified where we're selling it for pennies on a dollar, where it's going to be worth way more, especially if you want to sell, just hold out and get more money. Still, don't do it, but still, hold, inheritance, hold on to stuff. Nevertheless, I'm proud that she has that. I am. 
And of course, I love the fact that she is creating wealth for her children. And yes, her and her ex-husband, I'm pretty sure he has funds and whatnot to leave to his children. But leave them something. If nothing else, leave them a launching pad so they don't have to go through everything that you went through. Because even when she said with the Burger, I got kids to put through college. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm pretty sure her husband, I'm sorry, her ex-husband is putting some money on that. But I get what she's saying. Like, I have other priorities. The Burger ain't that damn serious. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Bill Cosby comes up. She says she uh, got a part on the Bill Cosby show. Um, agents reached out, got her number from her agent. Uh, she had a small part, which a lot of people did, but again, it's that exposure. It really, just in a lot of these different shows, especially, again, being Eidos, small exposures equals a lot. Even in, like, because say what y'all want, even with the whole coming number two America, so the coming to America part, um, well, the sequel, even though she had no speaking roles, say what you want, she was in Spider-Man Homecoming. Didn't have a whole lot, because Okay, but she was there. That Marvel money is good money. So even if she she went from a role where she had not a speaking line to being in a Marvel movie where she had a handful of lines, Garcia know what she's doing. Nevertheless, she mentioned the small part, said she was 18 years old when she got the part. She was invited back to his townhouse because he wanted to help her run lines and be a better actress. She took a sip of a drink that he had there and... When she did that, it didn't taste right. It didn't feel right. And she ran for the hills and even said in her book, she has a whole chapter about follow your gut. And look, I'm here to say to everybody, anybody that's listening to this review, follow your gut. Whether you want to call it intuition, the Lord, whatever, listen to that. I am because and if you don't believe me, I'm going to say this. Think about a time where in your mind. You, your body said, hey, do this or don't do this. And it's something so minute and you don't do it. And shortly thereafter, because I do feel that a lot of times our intuition or whatnot is because we've been here before and it's, you know, kind of warning us about something that's on the horizon, but we don't do it. And then we actually encounter that exact thing. And it's just like, mm, I did think about this. Something did tell me to do this, ask it and don't do this. And this is where I'm at. And again, sometimes, yeah, we do put 20 on 10. You do have people that have certain mental instabilities, you know, whatever. I am one of them, but that ain't the point. But more often than not, that and it's that first thought. that And we, we fan it off. I'm here to tell y'all, that thought, listen to it. And this is what she's saying, because I'm pretty sure had Gar still stayed in that moment, this would have panned out so differently. But I can appreciate that. That was the word. She gave y'all a word. I'm giving y'all an enhanced word. I'm adding on top of it and then erica was asked by andy so why did you throw garcelle's book in the trash and then lisa was like i'm actually the one that threw her uh book in the trash okay so we're back i'm pretty sure y'all know this review is going to be long but it is what it is i'm giving y'all some good content so hopefully y'all feel it and i'm gonna skip through some things and be y'all some personal things so um ooh, my handwriting is horrible here um Okay, so Lisa says that, um, and this is in reference to the whole, uh, her book being thrown in the trash and it being thought that it was, um, Erica that did it. So she says that, um, Lisa, that she was the one that did it. And she says that her and Garcilla had this agreement that her, well, pretty much all of the women, they would not, um, mention each other's children and whatnot. So, based off of the excerpt, um, it it really wasn't even anything. Now, mind you, this is an excerpt, so, and I'm not even gonna fucking, I'm not even reading it, because it's stupid. So, it's nothing, and it's not a direct thing, and even Annie was saying, like, was it a conversation that y'all had? So, Rita's whole thing is, my daughter should have never been mentioned. Cool, whatever, she's telling her story, whatever, and I will say in an instance such as this, maybe, Big maybe, Garcelle could have reached out. I am one of those where even though I will go to the depths of hell if we're beefing, and this is what this is, and you trying to really get me to go to a certain place, I have no problems with going there. But in a situation such as this, if I'm going to mention or even reference somebody's child, I will give the heads up. No, I won't, I'm lying. No, I won't, no. 
no, 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 no. I <laughs> if I was on a show like this, I probably would. But if I'm not saying directly your child's name, because Bravo would have showed that they said uh, Rena's child's name. Her name was never mentioned. If I'm going to mention a person's child, I'll say that a person's child that is in my age range or below, I may reach out. Other than that, no, because if we're the same age, we're in the same age group slash generation or above, not doing that. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. I had to catch myself because I was about to lie. I, I don't want to lie to y'all. Um, but again, we saw that was a lot based off what was said. Uh, Garcelle said that, you know, when Loris came into the place and whatnot, in the second edition and in the, um, the audio book, her daughter or that whole thing will be, you know, removed from the books and whatnot. So for those who have the first edition of the book, I'm going to say this. Hopefully you bought two, because one thing I've learned in life is with certain stuff by two of one to you know use as a novelty one to have on the <clears throat> on the shelves hopefully you bought two and that second one is on the shelves because if her child was mentioned that's gonna sell i'm just saying especially if it ain't been cracked open oh it's gonna sell but garcelle mentions that the photo in question was in the group chat but the group chat that it was in she wasn't a part of that says a lot. It really does. And you know, that lets us know, like real talk, like Garcelle really isn't a part of the group per se. And with everything that's going on, like I really want Kyle to see, even though you ain't cool with Garcelle, the person that you really need to be like buddy, buddy with is Garcelle. Especially seeing as how she's closer to your sister than you are. Anyway, so LVP comes up because, you know, they wanted to know how Garcelle's child, you know, um, was linked. And it was, she was at a van with LVP. Her son was looking for work. It got brought up. He's, you know, employed there. She was on, um, I want to assume, Vanderpump's Rules in an episode or whatever, which, of course, they're going to show that for promotion. And she's obviously going to do it because her son is not only employed by her, but more than likely going to be on the show. I ain't never watched it. But just saying. Um, but this was also an event for Haiti, and that's why Garcelle was there and got her son employed. But look, she don't look. She is Haitian, not Haitian American. She's Haitian. So if there's an event and it's close to her, cool. I have no issues with that, none whatsoever. So Andy mentions Erica um, taking one for Lisa because the it was a video apparently but i guess a, a snapshot was taken from that video that was in the group chat and erica posted it so erica was taking one for the team because that should have been directed towards lisa renna honestly i feel like that was let me do this so it's something for us to discuss on the reunion and i'm i i love garcelle because garcelle like just paid it does but what I don't like is in that scene because they kept showing Garcelle's face and how she was very unhappy and I think she, it wasn't what was being said I think she was not happy with the fact that Andy is defending those two Andy has his favorites and here's the reality you can have your favorites but you can be very you know cut and dry like I may like you, but I have a job to do. Y'all know, I like Candace. I like Kenya. If y'all truly watch my reviews or y'all watch me on the panels, when I got to give it to them, I give it to them. And I'm probably the, outside of being vulgar and nasty and whatnot, I'm probably the one that is giving it to them the worst because I like you and I ride for you. Like, you can sit here and still do your job and like somebody. Whatever. So we get the Lisa package and her mom's and whatnot. I didn't write nothing there, mostly because there was a question of Lisa possibly using her mother's death as a scapegoat. I'm going to say this. My father passed while I was still in the military. My mother still living, right? My father and I, we have a very, well, had, because he has thus going on the glory, had a very strange relationship. Strange and strained. 
because my parents were married when they had me and they divorced when I was two. So there's that. My eldest brothers of the union, because he had other children outside the union, they were able to experience that. So there was a lot of resentment there. And even as a child, I'm the one having to get on public transportation in Chicago, Illinois, having to travel to see you, be with you. You are in your room because he owned the apartment building, but he was in his room the majority of the time. I am in the living room, dining room area where I pretty much slept, watched TV and everything, but I had to go out of my way to be in your presence. And I'm having to do this when you help create me. I shouldn't be calling you trying to spend time with you. You should be trying to spend time with me. Again, that was younger me. It's what it is. But when my father passed on, it is what it is. In that moment, I did not take nothing out on anybody. And again, I was definitely in the mind of, I just lost my parent, but I'm also a non-commissioned officer in the United States Army. I have a job to do. So rather than going straight home, I wanted to make sure that all of that was taken care of, even though it wasn't because other people <laughs> dropped the ball. But like, let me make sure that this is all taken care of to, you know, really properly mourn my father. Because, again, like I did a whole lot of drinking and all the other stuff before I left from North uh, from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, to come back to Chicago. Whatever. I say all that to say this. I never show any signs of aggression or anything until a year later where I had to do a field problem at uh, JRTC, which is Joint Randomness Training Center, which is so funny because my next duty station, because uh, JRTC was in uh, Louisiana, and I ended up re-enlisting to go to Germany, <clears throat> and they had JMRC, which is Joint Multinational Randomness Training, where I'm now in OC, so I'm on the opposite side, but still, two sides of the same coin. And during the it, and the funny thing is, because you have the, well, you have the Advon, which is the people that get there to set everything up. And then after the Advon, everybody else gets there, the trails and everything. <clears throat> and then it's getting everything set up. And then you have the actual exercise. Then you have the aftermath. I was on the Advon to get things set up and doing all of that. And then after the setup, right before we went into the actual exercise, that portion was when I, <clears throat> in essence, had a break because my platoon leader, who was a non-commissioned officer back when we was at Fort Rucker, Alabama together, now turned warrant officer, I said to him before we left, like, look, we are approaching the year anniversary of my father being gone, and there is a strong chance that I might check out. So if I do that, because I knew him from a past duty station, because I went from Fort Rucker, Alabama, first duty station, to Camp Humphrey, South Korea, to Fort Bragg, which was my third duty station, and then um, Germany. But we're working between the first and the third. And I'm like, I need for you to kind of like jump in and kind of like help me out here. That didn't happen. <laughs> but between starting the exercise of me and Advon, there were a few moments that I snapped off on my, on my soldiers. I did. And in the moment, I wasn't going to explain what it was. Because not only, because it was a whole lot that was going on. When the exercise was over, I gathered all of my soldiers and let them know, like, look, I know I stepped off on y'all. It's because my father passed away a year ago. I am still dealing with, like, in the moment I dealt with it, there was some ish when I came home for the fune. Some ish. <laughs> it was a whole lot of shit going on. But I'm like, I was dealing with that. So in the if I ended up biting y'all heads off, I am wholeheartedly sorry. It, it wasn't personal. It wasn't even business. It was just me dealing with my own issues. But I was being man enough to talk to them because most people won't talk to their soldiers in the military and be like, hey, this is what this was. So I did that to just let them know. I'm saying all of this to say I am not going to say Lisa wasn't going through. But when you are. You can explain it. We didn't get that. Anyway, we get sudden and her clumsiness. Um, the uh, breaking, uh, we talked about the breaking with Dari and how Kyle internalized that and all that other stuff. 
And, you know, Sun is just like, you know, her words during that time in reference to the read, they were awful. But let's be honest, it's not that it's awful. More often than not, when we are going through what we're going through, sometimes we don't care what somebody else is going through. Because, yes, you had a break in. She is making money moves over here. It's what it is. And her and Dorit are not friends like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, da, 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 da. But she says she hates what she said to that dame. And then we talk about Kyle being physical with uh, Sutton because she was being all handsy and whatnot. But then they also said, but you didn't like when Brandy was being physical with you. I'm glad they said that. Of course, she explains it away. You know, um, apologies for Kyle, you know, throwing off the miscarriage because it's the whole, oh, because people saying that uh, Sutton does his whole thing of making something about herself. Kyle does that more than anybody. And part one of the reunion says that exactly. So then the liabilities come, well, liabilities uh, comment comes up and then we get Erica and Lisa and you know the whole thing of you know not ushering in what was going on because um garcelle is just like yeah i may say it for my friend but i'm not ushering somebody out because they're talking cash money which is exactly what lisa did to erica one second <clears throat> all right um yeah so man i talk about this about that so the watch what happens live um, comment what Sun Say comes up where she pretty much was talking about how and it was an analogy of you have Lisa Renna going hard on my friend Garcelle over a thank you even though she already said thank you for this tomato sauce and you wanted to sit here and push the issue because she didn't have a storyline but she didn't really say that and she was just saying how I was at Elton John's little, well, not little, let me not do that, at Elton John's, you know, charity event. And I brought her on as a plus one because I paid for these tables and she didn't thank me. And, you know, Lisa says she doesn't hate Sun because that's what Sun thinks. Uh, and it's confused, it's a confused, confused by the show, the whole I don't hate you. But then you had Sun says, I don't consider you to be a friend. And that kind of hurt Lisa. And she, you know, she's sorry for her, uh, you know, taking her emotions out on sudden when it comes to her, you know, mother's passing and whatnot, because that's the excuse. And again, we all grieve differently. I'm just saying for me, like, I know when I lost my father, you know, I'm happy that my mother's still here. I'm going to be all the way 1000 with you when I lose my mom. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, Bibs is going live because I'm so behind. I'm just sitting here running my mouth, so that's what that was. I had to hurry up and stop that. Um, but yeah, whatever. Let me go ahead and visit so I can come back to y'all, finish this, and then I can go over there and watch this live. All right, I'll be right back. Mm. All right, so I'm just going to end this right quick because, look, y'all know what's about to happen. And even though I didn't say this, I should have said it at the end of last week's video. Y'all know Kathy is going to come out and part three and shut it all down so we get lisa and her social media shenanigans and you know um garcelle posts and i'm sorry the garcelle post on ig where i can't say anything about garcelle and it not you know be perceived as a certain way you can you you really can especially if you're just talking about what it is but there is an undertone when it comes to things and then there is a photo of you and your husband and swastikas and all this other stuff and for those who really don't understand what the swastikas and what happened in you know europe when it comes to the holocaust or whatnot let's be very clear and i'm not diminishing nothing and for those y'all who try i am jewish by conversion but not only were the jewish europeans persecuted also those that were melanated primarily those who look like me and, and darker but also those who were of the LGBTQIA community were persecuted. Anyway, Crystal becomes act. Um, um, I said activated. Activated. I've been drinking. Don't judge me. She becomes activated. You know, with everything that's going on, especially with the whole perception of so Rena saying, "If I say this, this is what's going to come." Crystal becomes activated, and I'm just going to be very honest. And I. 
I shouldn't have to say this. I do have friends and, you know, people that I'm cool with that are Asian, that are, you know, from various... Because when I say Asian, I'm not just talking about Chinese, Japanese, and uh, Korean. I'm talking about those who are from Taiwan, you know, and other parts of Asia. Like, I have friends from there and those that I've served with, so... But I understand it, okay? But I know what she was going after. And there is colorism that exists within the Asian community. I'm not going to talk about it. But for those of y'all who know and have been, not in the, not, we're not talking about America. If you have been in Asia, you know what I'm talking about. And you know when Crystal brings up her point, because again, look, Crystal is trying to secure her, pe uh, not her peach, her, um, is it a diamond? I think it's diamond. Is it diamond? Screw it. Her diamond for next season. And, and it's like, we're not talking about the same thing because what you're talking about is different from what she's talking about. But again, Crystal understands the assignment from what I was saying about um, Sutton, where Sutton should be trying to jump in. Crystal is trying to jump in where she can't. And that's it. And y'all know next episode, we bring it up Kathy. And we're going to talk about Kathy. So I'm about to end this because Mims is live. So I'm about to end this. Be over there. Upload this. If y'all haven't watched Make It Make Sense and his video, I will do my best. But I've been drinking, so it may not happen. But if not, just type in Make It Make Sense and check out the video. All right, y'all. Love you. Bye.